What if I told you that the biggest battles of your life are happening silently inside your brain every single day? I'm Olaf Kruh Olson. I'm a neuroscientist at the University of Victoria, where I study how people make decisions, what drives them, and what derails them. So how did I become a neuroscientist? I've always been interested in the decisions that people make. And I've made some pretty bad decisions myself, and I wanted to understand them a bit better. During the COVID pandemic, I developed a small problem with online shopping. <laughs> okay, I got completely carried away with buying things online. It starts with me checking the news. I read the news every day to see what's going on in the world. As you scroll down a news website, you'll find a consumer section with articles that have titles like 20 things that every traveler needs, or 15 must-have items for your kitchen. I am a sucker for those articles and the items in them. And before you know it, I'm going online and I'm buying something that I don't need. I have not one, but two clothing steamers. A large one for use at home and a small one for when I travel. The problem is, I've never used either one of the clothing steamers. <laughs> so, why did I buy them? The short answer is that there was a tug of war between two distinct regions of my brain. One brain region won, the other lost. The tug of war between these two brain regions is something that we can both see and study. Let me introduce you to these two brain regions briefly. There's the prefrontal cortex that I'm gonna call the analyst, and there is the amygdala that I'm gonna nickname the reactor. Now, I'll tell you more about these brain regions in a bit. For now, uh, a bit more about me. I run a research laboratory at the University of Victoria. As a neuroscientist, I feel that we have to peer inside the brain to truly understand human behavior, to see what's going on, and more importantly, figure out why. My area of study, the neuroscience of human decision-making. I study how people make decisions, why people make decisions, and the factors that influence decision-making. In my lab, we use tools like EEG, or brain waves, and fMRI, or brain images, to watch what's going on in the brain while people make decisions, to see which brain regions are active and when. As I've told you, decision-making is a tug of war between two regions of the brain, two brain regions pulling in opposite directions. There is the analyst, the prefrontal cortex, calm, rational, and thinking long-term. And there's the reactor, impulsive, emotional, and ready to act now. In terms of my online shopping problem, the analyst was saying things like, do you really need this item? Can you afford this item? The reactor was chanting, buy it, buy it, buy it. As I've told you, we can peer inside the brain to get some understanding about the tug of war in the brain. Neuroscience research has helped inform us a bit better. One way that we study the tug of war in the brain is with the ultimatum game. In the ultimatum game, there are two players. One player is given an amount of money and has to make an offer to share some of that money with the other player. The other player has to accept or reject the offer. A key rule of the ultimatum game is that you only play one time. If a fair offer is made, 
say, a 50-50 split, the offer is almost always accepted because the decision is straightforward. However, if a player offers to share 10% of the money and keep 90% of the money for themselves, sometimes the offer is rejected. The decision is not as straightforward because the offer is perceived to be unfair. Logically, you should accept any offer because some money is better than no money. <laughs> if you were gonna play the game multiple times, then rejecting an unfair offer makes sense because you're sending a message. But if you only play one time, always take the money. <laughs> what I find fascinating is peering inside the brain while people play the ultimatum game. You can see the tug of war between the analyst and the reactor. If an unfair offer is rejected, you see more activity in the reactor than in the analyst. If an unfair offer is accepted, you see more activity in the analyst than in the reactor. Now, I realize that a lot of the decisions that we face are more complex than whether or not to accept or reject an offer in the ultimatum game or whether or not to buy another clothing steamer. So let me tell you about the hardest decision that I ever had to make. Some time ago, I was a professor at Dalhousie University, a job I got after 15 years of university education in a competitive job market. I moved to Halifax with a wife and son. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. My wife and son moved back to Victoria. The decision that I had to make was whether I should stay at Dalhousie and establish my career or to move back to an uncertain future in Victoria. At Dalhousie, I had a great job. I'd started an outstanding research laboratory. I loved the courses I taught and I had amazing graduate students. My career was finally on track. In Victoria, I didn't have a job, but that's where my three-year-old son was. The analyst was telling me to choose my career and stay at Dalhousie. It was coming up with suggestions and ideas like, you can always fly to Victoria to visit your son, and Zoom is a great way to stay in touch. The reactor was telling me to move to Victoria and be with my son. The tug of war. I decided to walk the Camino de Santiago, a thousand kilometers across Spain. I did this so that the tug of war could unfold in my brain. The truth is I made my decision in the first 30 minutes of the walk. The rest of the walk, I was thinking about how my career was going to unfold. Given that I'm in my 11th year as a professor at the University of Victoria, you can probably guess which brain region won the tug of war. So understanding the tug of war in the brain, how can we use this information to make the best decisions possible? Well, as I've said earlier, Peering inside the brain has given us some ideas. Let me share one with you now. In a recent study by my research group, we had people walk inside for 15 minutes and walk outside for 15 minutes. Before the walk, we had people play a video game in which they made a series of decisions while we measured their brain activity. We did this to establish a baseline. After the walk, we redid the test. What we found was that exercise enhanced brain function, a result that we expected because it had been demonstrated many times before. However, what we found that was unique 
was that brain function was enhanced to an even greater extent by walking outside. You're looking at the brain response to decisions made by people before and after the walk. You see that spike right where the arrow is? We call that the P300. It's a neural response that occurs approximately 300 milliseconds after a decision is made. After walking outside, that spike, the dark blue line, is clearly larger than the other spikes. This shows that a key neural process associated with decision-making is enhanced by walking outside. So, if you want to make better decisions, go for a 15-minute walk. Just make sure you go for that walk outside. And this takes me right back to my online shopping problem. <laughs> Most of my decisions to buy things are made quickly when the reactor is in a position to win the tug of war. However, if I distract myself or I walk away from my computer, I give the analyst the time it needs to win the battle, and I do not buy that thing that I do not need. And of course, it's not just about online shopping. The tug of war in our brain is present even for the decisions that matter the most. So, with the wisdom of 15 years of university experience and 15 years of university education, let me leave you with the following piece of advice. If you're struggling with a tough decision, try and remember to be aware of the tug of war in your brain. Sometimes the life that we want to live, like the life that I get to live being near my son every day, is just a walk outside away. <laughs>